ASP.NET provides a special type of website that allows you to configure security and other aspects of an ASP.NET web application. So in this section, I'm going to walk through how we can use this ASP.NET configuration website. Now, the particular website we're going to talk about, you can access directly through the project menu in, in Visual Studio or Visual Web Developer Express, and you'll select ASP.NET configuration. Once you do that, this web application shown here will be displayed, and you can do several different things. You can set up SMTP servers, you can set up app settings, you can set up different types of providers your application may use, but we're going to focus on the security aspect. So you'll notice from the screenshot here that we can control users, we can set up different roles, and we can actually hook users into those roles, and we can also set up access rules, and these access rules will control who can get to which files or which folders in your application. And what's really nice about this is, number one, it supports several different authentication types. But number two, you can just click on the different items you need, and it's going to write the XML configuration code for web.config for you for that given web application. So it's very simple to get started with and to use. So let me show you an example of using the ASP.NET configuration website. To use the ASP.NET configuration website, we first need a project to work with. So I'm going to go to File, New Project. We're going to create an ASP.NET web application. Now, depending on the type of project you create, you get different default security. If we do an ASP.NET web application, then out of the box, forms authentication will be enabled. If we do an empty web application, then nothing will be defined in the web.config file, and so you'll default to a Windows authentication project. So that's just something to be aware of, but we're going to go with the forms authentication one to start and we're going to work with this configuration website. So let's call this config website demo and we'll create our project. Now before we go up to project ASP.NET configuration, let's run into web.config and let's take a quick look at what's been added for us by this default project type. So the first thing you'll see is a connection strings area and the connection string is called application services and it points to the data directory to a, a database called ASP.NET DB. Now the data directory is a key word that is used to represent our app data folder that you'll see right here. But you'll notice that if I go to show all files there's nothing in there right now. That's because that database will be created for us on the fly. So I'll come back and revisit that in just a moment. Now moving on down, you'll notice our authentication mode is set to forms, and inside of that we have a login URL that points to our account, and we have a login page, and then you'll also notice we have registration as well as change password pages automatically added for us. So you can see right off the bat we're doing forms authentication. Now the next important piece is we have what's called a membership provider configured. Now a membership provider basically says we would like to use Microsoft's default database and we're going to use a SQL membership provider class to talk to that database. Now that's the database that currently doesn't exist but it will in a moment. And the important part here is not only are we defining that we're going to hit Microsoft's database using this, but we're also defining the connection string that would be used so that this class knows, hey, here's how to talk to the database. So if you recall that application services is the same name that we have up here for our connection string. Now moving on down we can also store personalization data, that's what a profile is, and then we can also do roles. Now you'll notice currently roles are not enabled. So they're disabled by default but in a moment I'm going to go ahead and enable those but we won't do it through webconfig. I could certainly come in and simply type true there but I'm going to show the ASP.NET configuration website. All right, so the first thing to show you is let's go to that website and this will pull up and it's going to actually reference in the query string the path to our application we're working with. So you'll notice up in the query string we have config website demo, that's the folder, and then we get into the actual project itself. Now from here we can go in and configure app settings. We have a SMTP settings if you want to configure an email server for sending email. We can take the application offline if we're going to do some work on it, and we can even configure debugging, tracing, and error pages. We're going to focus, though, on the security section, but you'll notice that when I click on security, 
it says could not load type config website demo global now the error is a little bit misleading and what it really means is we don't have a database yet it's trying to hit it but as I showed you earlier if we go to app data and click show all files there's no database there let's fix that real quick so I'm gonna right click on default ASPX view it in the browser and we're gonna to try to log in now I don't even have a database so obviously I don't have a user yet but what this will do is as soon as I try to log in here, it's actually going to create the database for us on the fly. So we'll let it sit here. There we go. Said we were unsuccessful. We don't have a user, so that makes sense. We'll come back, and now I'm going to right click and say, let's include this database in our project. So now we have a default database that can store users and roles, and we haven't had to do anything at this point. So pretty nice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show or hide all the files there, and let's go back into our Data Explorer. You'll notice there's our new database. Let's just take a really quick look at some of the tables. Now, we're not going to need to know much about these, but it's nice to know what it stores. So the first thing it does is we have an Applications table, and this stores all the different applications. So this database could be shared across multiple applications, and I'll talk about that in an upcoming section in this module. We can also store membership information, we can store personalization information, roles, users, and even associate users with roles. And so this default database that ASP.NET provides out of the box stores all that data for you and passwords are even stored very securely. They use things called salts and hashes to make it very secure. Okay, so now that we have a database we can come up to project, go back to ASP.NET configuration. Let's go back to security. You'll notice that we get a different screen now. Now that we have a database, we'll notice that we have no users, roles are not enabled. It read that from web.config. And then we can even create access rules. So what I'm going to do is let's say that in our application, we'd like to come in and add a new folder and we'll just call it secured and in secured I'll add a new web form and we'll call this super secure web form and add that in and I'm just gonna put a message you made it past security alright so this could be an admin screen we'll say now right now if I run it in the browser we can get directly to it and that would be expected of course because I haven't secured it so let's go ahead and use the ASP.NET configuration tool to automatically secure any file that's in this secured folder. So we'll come back into the tool. And first thing I need to do is I need to add some users. So let's create a user. And you'll notice in this case uh, we get a little error. Occasionally if you ever get that, go ahead and close it, run back to ASP.NET configuration, and every now and then it will time out. So we'll go back in. We'll do JDO. Let's do a password and an email address. You'll notice roles are not enabled yet, but we're going to come back and add a role. So we'll say create user. Okay, hit OK, and now we can add more users if we'd like. So it's pretty convenient, very easy to get users into this database. Now we have one user, but we don't have any roles. So let's go ahead and try to enable roles. That's now enabled. That just updated web.config for us. Now we can say create or manage roles. Let's add a new role called admin. Okay, so now we have a role. Now we can say add or remove users. Let's click on manage and we'll go and search for jdoe. There it is and we want to say that the user is in the admin role, which you can see the role right up top there. And we'll hit back and that's going to take us back to the screen we're at and then we can add other users if we want. But if we go to security now, go to manage users, you'll notice that jdoe, uh, if we come over, let's go to edit roles, is now in the admin role. We didn't have to do anything because we've already hooked that up. So it makes it very, very easy without having to write any custom code to integrate with this database that Microsoft provides to add your users and your roles. Now the final step is we need to create some access rules. We added this secured folder and I could just secure the file but I'm going to secure the entire folder and say anything in there uh, you have to have be in the admin role to get to those files. So let's come back in. We'll create an access rule 
And the first thing I'm going to do is on the left, it's going to show you your project. And so if we scroll on down, there's my secured folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And right now, we're going to say that the role admin is allowed. So we'll hit OK. Now we're going to come back into Manage Access Roles. We're going to go ahead and click on Secured. And right now, you'll notice this did work. So we are allowing admin, but all, all users are currently also allowed. Now, it's not going to work so good. So if I try to go to this page, I can still get to it, even though I haven't logged in yet. Now, the reason for that is we need to go in and actually add an access rule that says don't allow all users. So we'll add a new access rule, come back down, make sure we click on our secured here just to make sure we're on the right one. We're going to say all users deny OK. So now let's go back. We'll try to go directly to this super secure and let's see what happens. All right, perfect. So we can't get into it now. But J. Doe should be in the admin role. Let's try to log in. It now redirects me back to super secure. And now we're in. So we're good to go. So that's how easy it is to use the ASP.NET configuration site to add users, add roles, and even set up access roles. And let me just show you what web.config, how things were modified in it. So connection string was already there. We already had our forms and some of this other information, but you'll notice that role manager is enabled and set to true. And so now everything's configured. The database has all the data we want inside of it. And again, if I try to go back to super secure, we shouldn't be able to get to it. We have to log in. Now you may wonder, how did ASP.NET actually know that if we hit the secured folder, that it should redirect to the login page? Now, of course, we added those access rules using the website configuration tool, but where was that stored? Well, let's go back, and if we go to the main web.config, we've already scrolled through this a little bit, and you'll see we have the standard stuff. We have our connection strings, we have our authentication for forms, we have our membership provider definition, profiles, and roles. And that's it. There's nothing regarding the admin role. Well, when we set up the access rules using the tool, it actually added a web.config file into the secured folder. Now, to show that, we can do show all files. I'm going to right click and say include in project and now you can see it shows up it's not grayed out and let's open it up so you can see that right off the bat it's pretty obvious what it's doing so when we added the access rules it added this authorization tag it said we want to allow the admin role and deny everyone else and that's what this is saying here that's how it actually knows when you try to hit the super secure.aspx because this folder has this web config any file in this folder would only be accessible if you're already logged in and you're in the admin role. And that's what's going on behind the scenes. So that's an example of how we can use the ASP.NET configuration website tool to create users, define roles, put users into those roles, and even define access roles. But we didn't have to write any custom code to interact with the database or even set up the custom web.config file that was added into the secured folder. So it's a great tool to help you get started securing your ASP.NET applications.